Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are making tea fit for a queen. All right, if you're new here, hi, I'm Claire. Welcome, come on in, make yourselves comfortable. I recently traveled to London with my husband and I picked up this wonderful little cookbook. I love cooking from cookbooks on this channel. If you like vintage cooking or creative recipes of any kind, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Today we are breaking out this cookbook for the very first time. It is called Tea Fit for a Queen, Recipes and Drinks for Afternoon Tea. I picked this up in the gift shop of Westminster Abbey, but they sell it at all of the royal palaces. So the recipes in here are all fabulous and there's a lot of them I want to try. However, the one that caught my eye straight off the bat is the Bakewell Tart. I've heard of a Bakewell Tart. I bought some Cherry Bakewells, like little versions while I was there in London. Um, and I hadn't actually learned any of the history about it. There's a little blurb here, I'll read it to you. For such a modest bake, Bakewell Tart can certainly cause a lot of furor. The pudding tart debate is very controversial. I didn't know we were making such a controversial cake tart pudding situation. It is generally accepted that its earliest incarnation, Bakewell pudding, dates from Tudor times and was full of rich ingredients that sweet-toothed Henry VIII would have enjoyed. Today, a simple almond filling sits on a layer of jam in the traditional dessert from the town of Bakewell in Derbyshire. So, uh, yeah, this is an old recipe uh, from the Tudor times. So. Hopefully we won't lose our heads over it, and let's get going. All right, so we are going to start with the pastry, which is going to be a regular all-purpose flour. We also have some chilled unsalted butter. We have an egg, although we're only going to be using the yolk, and we're also just gonna be using a pinch of salt. Today I am going to be using um, this little food processor. That is my method of choice, but you don't need to use this, obviously. The Tudors did not have one, so, you know, you'd be fine. All right, for the pastry, put the flour, butter, and salt in the food processor and whiz until the mixture resembles breadcrumbs. We need 175 grams of flour. Oh, perfect. All right, put that in. And I am going to just, like, chop up the butter And now we're gonna throw in a pinch of salt. I was always taught that a pinch of salt is like an eighth of a teaspoon. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> we'll go with that, I don't know. And now, per the instructions, we're going to give it a whiz. All right, and it's now sort of crumbly. This is what we want. Now we need to separate our yolk from our egg. And to that, we're going to add two tablespoons of cold water. Give this a bit of a stir. All right, now we're supposed to add it. Oh no, oh, I already took this out. We're supposed to pulse it a few times. You know, it's okay. It'll be fine. <laughs> we're just gonna just gonna do one of these. We're gonna tip it out anyway, right now, very soon. Throw a little flour down. And tip this out. All right, from my previous experience working with this type of uh, crust, we definitely don't wanna over knead it. We just want it to come together, like just so. And I know you can also drizzle just a little bit of water on there if it's a little bit too dry. I am gonna go ahead and do that, just a bit. And we definitely don't want like our hands to melt those chunks of butter, so there we go. Just so it comes together. All right, now we're gonna flatten it into a disc shape I mean, <laughs> roughly. And we are going to wrap this in plastic wrap and throw it in the fridge for at least 15 minutes. We want it nice and chilled. All 
All right, it's been 15 minutes, and so now we are going to roll our pastry out. All right, and the instructions say that I'm supposed to roll this out to two to three millimeters, and I'm not gonna lie to you, my sense of how much a millimeter is, it's not great, guys. I don't, I don't know. My brain is just telling me till it's really thin. Uh, here is my tart pan. Uh, I borrowed this from my mom, so thanks, mom, for lending that to me, so I didn't have to buy one just for this recipe. Does it say to grease the pan? No, it doesn't, but I actually am terrified that this isn't gonna turn out, so we're greasing it anyway with a little bit of cooking spray. On the British Baking Show, they do one of these, you know? Like rolling it up, oh my god. Oh, I'm so worried it's gonna break. It's okay. Ooh, okay. Cause you definitely do not wanna overwork this dough or it will not do what you want it to do. Okay, okay, all right. It's gonna be fine. I've actually never made a tart before, ever. I've never used this pan. This is the first time. All right, now I'm gonna just cut the excess off here. Oh my gosh, ugh. I feel like it's not gonna look fancy. All right, now we need to take a fork and prick the base of it all over. And now we are going to chill this for 15 minutes again. Uh, just to kind of take care of any of that little butter bits that kind of melted with my hands, we're gonna rechill it. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven. The recipe called for 190 degrees Celsius, which comes out to 374 degrees Fahrenheit, but we're just gonna call it 375, because that makes sense. Okay, so I was just reading the recipe and I forgot to add that you're supposed to put a pan in to preheat in your oven. So, I did that. All right, our crust has sufficiently chilled and now we're gonna bake it. However, um, even in this old school style uh, cookbook, it does call for baking beans. They are also called pie weights in the United States. Do you think I would spend money on those? No, I wouldn't, not when I have a bag of rice. So I'm just using some parchment paper. You could also use foil. You could use uh, like dried beans or I like to use rice, and this is just to keep it from getting puffy. This just weighs it down a bit. Uh, so yeah, much cheaper than buying actual pie weights. And you could even eat the rice when you're done if you really wanted to. Uh, but yeah, this will just like keep it weighted down. And now we're ready to pop this in the oven. We are going to bake this for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna come back and take this off uh, and bake it for five more. So 15 minutes total. It's not like the end of the world if some of it gets in there. Aha, perfect. And now we're gonna pop it in there for five more minutes. All right, while our pastry is baking, I'm gonna go ahead and make our filling. Um, for the filling, we are going to need sliced almonds. We also have almond flour, which I have found in these um, United Kingdom recipes to be called ground almonds, but you know, almond flour. We also have some almond extract, heavy on the almond flavor here. We have some softened butter, 75 grams to be exact. We have two eggs. We have 75 grams of sugar, and we also have some self-rising flour. Uh, this is going to be 25 grams, so not very much. I do pretty much think that they did not have self-rising flour in the Tudor times. I remember reading that it was a Victorian era thing, which is why the Victoria Sandwich, one of my favorite cakes, is so light and fluffy because of self-rising flour. So I'm not really sure how, like, really accurately Tudor this is, but anyway. We've used it as our inspiration, and that's what we're doing. We also have one of the main tenets of the, uh, uh, tart, which is some jam. Now, the recipe technically calls for raspberry jam, two to three tablespoons. However, I have this wild Maine blueberry jam that I got in an Imperfect Foods box that I've just been waiting to use with something. And this just seems like the time. Now is the time to use it. So, 
you know, we're altering the flavor just a little bit, but like it's still a berry and it's also a very high quality jam, which I think is more important that it's of quality rather than which fruit it is. I don't know. We're going with this jam. First thing we're going to do is we're going to beat the butter and the sugar uh, until it's creamy. So, you know, like most recipes of this style, cream in the butter and sugar. And we need 75 grams of sugar. And I also will admit that this isn't that much sugar, actually. Um, I know like American style cakes are often a whole lot sweeter. All right, there's our 75 grams. Throw that in there. Cream it up. This is nice and creamy. I'm gonna add my eggs one at a time. All right, so I've just taken our pastry shell out and we're gonna go ahead and bump the temperature down to 355. And now we're going to measure our almond flour. We are going to need uh, 125 grams. Now we need a quarter of a teaspoon of almond extract. I'm just gonna eyeball that. Just like a little bit. And now we also need our 25 grams of self-rising flour. So not very much. There we go. All right, and before we add our filling, we're gonna go ahead and coat our pie crust in a couple of tablespoons of this beautiful jam. We'll put like, I don't know, almost three. I find that most of the recipes in that book call for some sort of fruit, for sure. It's very much currants, preserves, jams, jellies, way, way, way much more so than you see in American baking. All right, and now we're going to spread our mixture on top. Honestly, I think I should have piped this. It doesn't say that in the instructions, but now that I'm doing it, I think it would probably look more beautiful if it were piped on. But oh well, we've committed now. <laughs> Gotta just keep going. All right, now we're gonna add our flaked almonds on top. It says you need 15 grams, but like, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And it's fun, they're called flaked almonds in the recipe, but here in the US, we call them sliced almonds. Okay, so our instructions say 30 to 40 minutes. So we're gonna start at 30, we're gonna check it. It's supposed to be like brown and firm on the top, so we'll start there and see how it goes. All right, so it's been 30 minutes, and it is indeed nice and brown and firm to the touch. So we're gonna take it out now, and we're gonna let it cool down. All right, this is my first tart. Maybe I should have waited till it was cooler than this? I don't know. Ah! If it falls apart now, it's gonna ruin my life, guys. Oh, it's so beautiful, though. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Oh my god, I cannot wait to eat this. You wanna smell it, Desmond? Yeah. Do you think it smells Ooh. good? It smells good, doesn't it? It smells pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you want to eat it, don't you? All right, time to cut into this fabulous looking tart. Wow, it's holding its shape really nicely. Let's look at it. Oh! Oh my god, stop! I have really succeeded here, guys. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to try this. Of course, we need some tea. All right, time to give it a taste. I am so impressed with this crust. It is like the perfect crispness on the bottom. No soggy bottoms in the tent today, everyone. Gosh, when is the next season of the Bake Off? Oh my gosh. This is so good. I can see the debate between a tart and a pudding because it definitely 
has a more cake like texture but it's got this great jammy bit that does make it more of like a pudding you know type situation and honestly those almonds are unbelievable like that flavor is so good and I was a little worried about it being like not sweet enough but it's totally totally sweet enough mmm and of course what would our tea time be without a little bit of tea and there you have it, the Bakewell Tart from the Tea Fit for a Queen cookbook. I really, really enjoyed this recipe. It was very easy to follow, super beautiful, and something I will totally make again, especially if I'm bringing it somewhere. I think it definitely makes an impact. It's really beautiful. So yeah, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this. Have you ever had a Bakewell Tart? How do you think I did? Uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye! Oh, I gotta... Doesn't Queen Elizabeth, doesn't she do like the little one? And then there's like the Genovian wave, you know. The most important royals, Queen Elizabeth and the Queen of Genovia, duh.